Hey, happy Thursday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I got some big updates for you. I'm, we're going to zoom in and look all over this map and check out the snowfall that's coming in. The severe weather is coming in that has kicked up. Remember, there is that day four, 15%. It has grown to that day five, just like I told you yesterday. It was, and it did. So I'm going to go through all the latest information so you know what to expect. Plus, next storm that's coming through on the west coast bringing storms for y'all as well so make sure you click the bell make sure you subscribe i do forecasting all year long now let's get into your information so for today you have the severe weather you still got the marginal and you still got the slight risk now all that is not for tornadoes matter of fact your tornadoes is just going to be right here along the coast from victoria all the way towards cameron you do have chances for hail this is where your biggest chance for hail to accrue up is going to be and it is going to be around houston it did move over towards houston for the worst just like i showed you we are going to get that still that bowen feature overnight and it is going all the way towards beaumont as well and this does stretch all the way towards haskell and graham with a lower risk but as you go for your winds this is where you have chances for winds in this whole section as well now there's going to be two parts to your storms in the south for today so first all the way into the early afternoon you're going to have these storms that's going to be passing by texas mostly from houston all the way to southwestern louisiana so these are not super severe all these severe cells are going to be in the gulf of mexico strengthening it up you see these cells are just regular thunderstorms passing through you don't even see any hail cores in any of those until you start getting that dry line later tonight so after you get that first passing, then you get that dry line that's going to kick in later tonight. And this is where your severe storms are going to start brewing up, where you're going to have strong cells moving in this region for your hail threat. And the rest of y'all are just going to have regular thunderstorms. But there is going to be some damage in winds. You can see a little bit of bowing out feature in those as that passes through the evening. Really, it looks like 10 through 11 o'clock from Austin towards Bryan, Texas. Those two areas really get some nasty cells moving through all even along to the early morning hours then it goes towards louisiana still pushing a little bit of wind behind it to me it looked like maybe the 40 miles per hour wind gust might be pockets of 50 when it bows out but other than that it don't look like it's a huge damage and wind event look like you do have a chance for the hail though so just remember that it is a little bit milder north on these cells all the dew points are southern now when this whole cluster of storms moves through overnight for tomorrow morning you're going to have some storms start moving through towards florida and for tomorrow you do have the chances for the tornadoes you do have them over here for louisiana and right here on the southern coast of florida well all the way to the keys so you see these storm cells as you go through florida really burst up once you go through tomorrow morning but look at this big line of hail cores of these storms all in the gulf of mexico and you do get some cells that move through over here by grand isle louisiana as you go through tomorrow morning once you go through early in the morning those cells move off a little bit of hail core as it goes through mississippi mostly in the water from what i can see as that moves by you might even get another batch that moves through maybe eight nine o'clock at night but these storm cells going over florida they're going to be training for multiple hours so you have it along the coast of the panhandle as well so st joe you might want to keep your heads up but mostly over here for southern florida as you get this training of storms for tomorrow morning and then it just trains for multiple hours now the trend has been that this is going to go on a southeasterly path on these storm cells and it's not going to go straight to the east against florida so it won't be super bad with these storm cells it will go further and further to the south however on the edge it is bringing these strong storm cells that pass by and these could flare up a spin up maybe a tornado maybe a water spout coming on land as it goes by into the early morning hours as well this is going to be all night into the early morning hours all the way until saturday morning now look over here for the carolinas i will update this for tomorrow so we can see better but as you go into tomorrow afternoon overnight storms into the early morning hours as well as that goes in for saturday and there is a severe weather for saturday chances for tornadoes for southern florida still and over here along the coast of north carolina as all these storms brew up overnight so i will update that as well Plus, we got the storms in the north. We got all the snow that's coming down. And this snowfall, you can see what HRRR is coming down all day long, but it really powers up as it goes through Wisconsin. I will show you, you get some convection, you get some strengthening in the storm, and you start getting some heavier snowfall as that flies through all the way for tomorrow afternoon, 
all the way towards the northeast. And you see how it's just a little bit of y'all going to get the snow. The rest of y'all are getting the storms on this first one. You still got the parade coming. You still got another storm system coming, bringing even heavier snowfall. Now, so far, what we can see with HRRR is a good bit of a snowfall that's coming down. A lot of it is coming down pretty heavy for Montana, but then it lightens up as it passes through North Dakota. But then it starts getting heavier again as it comes through Wisconsin, as it comes through Minnesota. Bring in heavier snowfall totals for you. Look how it adds up from Milwaukee, Elroy, all the way down here towards Madison as well. A lot of y'all get a lot of good snowfall because of that convection, because of that flaring up of these storms. And this is just from the first one. Look at this good snowfall totals that's coming out of this all the way up towards the UP, getting good snowfall all the way from the east, all the way to the west. Very good snowfall coming out of this first one. Nice low zoom of storms all the way towards the northeast. Remember, it's going to be more northern for New England and upstate New York. So this is what I wanted to show you when you look at your cape, when you look at your lift. You see how it all pulls up to early this afternoon with your strongest lift. Right when that dry line starts kicking in and you get that line of storms like I showed you. And look how this pushes a little bit to the east. But then it miles down greatly. Then as you go overnight into the early morning hours, this is where you get that linear storm. This is where you get that squall line pushing east. Don't have a lot of convection with that. Then for tomorrow, it flares right back up as it goes across Mississippi and Alabama. This will keep it strong all along the coast. That's why your threat is only along the coast. Now for tomorrow, even though you see this line of storms does move across the south, but you can see you get all this convection that still piles up, but that's not really no big deal because there's no storms. There's no precipitation moving in that region to feed off of that. That's not going to be anything. But you can see with your significant tornado perimeters that this literally drags right by Houston and then stays right along the coast as you go later in the evening, overnight hours, then for tomorrow it flares right back up. You get a little spike right there for New Orleans for the West Bank. Just be aware, could have a chance for a tornado for tomorrow morning as those cells fling by, and then it's going to go for tomorrow. So as this goes by for Louisiana, chances for a tornado, you can see you don't have a lot right there, but you get some cells that HRRR is suggesting could be coming through, and it could get a spin up or two out of those. Just be aware of that. And look how it goes right along the Florida panhandle, bringing these storm cells right off the Gulf, right by all. So you see how you get a lot of convection, a lot of lift right along the coast, and that's where your significant tornado perimeters is as well. They see a lot of shear, a lot of strong dew points. And then it really piles up as you go through Saturday morning, maybe down towards Cape Coral, because you can see these little cells that pop up right off the Gulf. That's what you need to be aware of. Now, one thing I want to show you is when this storm system starts building up as you go overnight Thursday for Friday, you start getting a little bit of freezing rain for Iowa as well. But the storm system really brews up to some heavy banding across Iowa, Wisconsin, and Michigan as that comes across. And look how heavy all that banding gets. So that's why all that heavy snowfall is only for that one region right there because you get a lot of convection and it really powers up that storm as it comes across for Friday evening. And then it goes right back on this cold air on the northern half and bringing the rest of y'all storms right up that coast. But it is bringing that heavy banding. Now Sunday when you have that severe weather start kicking up and it is 15% is going into southern half of Nebraska, across Kansas, across Oklahoma, into some of texas then as you go through monday monday is where it's going to grow in the south as well so monday you have it also all the way from northeastern arkansas western tennessee going across mississippi and across louisiana this is where that patch of storms is brewing through as well and you can see here from your dew points as you go through sunday they really pull up and it's still in the high 50s and you get your 60s in this yellow and that's where your severe weather risk will be but you see how it just really kicks in as you go overnight into Monday, and that's what moves right across towards Louisiana, towards southern Arkansas, and you get some strong dew points as that moves to the east. So that's what we need to watch out for. Also a chance right there. Look at look how it deepens 
and you still get some strong dew points as you go through Tuesday morning. So it could stretch another day. But what you can also see is when we get that snowstorm in the north. So as you go through Monday, you get that patch convection, that lift from your lower level winds above, and it gives it some lift and it strengthens that storm as it comes by. And that's why it brings more banding and more snowfall. And you can see this on H triple R. So as you go through Thursday, you get them storms brewing up, but you start getting some storms brewing up for Friday morning through Friday evening, really brewing up that precipitation, bringing a lot of heavy banding while you get the storms in the South as well bringing heavy snowfall on the banding on the north and bringing a lot of storms in the south and the southeast. And all that is still going to meet up together in the northeast, bringing a lot of rain and that snow on the northern half of New England and upstate New York. Showing the latest update with the Euro on your rainfall, bringing some to southern Oregon, northern California. Also, it's coming in northeast. Half of this is going to be snowfall. But look how it's going towards southern Florida. But when you look at the update, the trend has been more southern. See how it dropped even further to the south. I think this might drop a little bit further to the south, but I still bring in two to three, maybe even up to four or five inches of rainfall. Getting heavier as you go more southern. So this is a snowfall expected according to the National Weather Service model by Saturday. And then we got more coming in for the upper Midwest and the Northeast, New England mostly, and the higher elevations of California. Not bringing a lot to the Northwest on this first storm. It is that second one that's going to bring more to y'all. Higher elevations in California. Yes, you see it does add up as it goes through Montana. Starts getting heavier, and they were the ones I was going to get skipped, and it got heavier, and then start lighting up as it comes in through the Dakotas, through Minnesota and Iowa. And this is where a lot of the discrepancy is. So National Weather Service model shows that because it gets that convection, because it gets that strengthening of that storm system, it does bring more precipitation, more snowfall in this purple section for Wisconsin and going into Michigan. Plus, for the northeast, you can see it's upstate New York, and it's going to be the northern half of New England. Now, when you go by other models, it's a different amount. This is a National Weather Service model. Even when you go by the blend, it shows that as well. Then you got that next storm system coming through. So remember, the next storm system is the one that's bringing that one to that two feet as you go in from Saturday to Monday big swath of two feet coming with that one so i will keep you updated it is going to move around just a little bit but you can still see that is just a banger of a snowstorm still coming with that one now the pitch is very important where this storm is going to pivot that determines not only who's getting this one foot of snow who's going to get that two foot of snow so this is according to the euro this is according to the gfs according to the canadian and the national blend of models showing the heaviest will be for eastern south and north dakota also from central to southern minnesota that's where your pivot point should be where you're exceeding 18 inches probably over two feet still showing is going to bring a lot of strong winds it's going to start off with that 50 that 60 maybe even higher elevations getting in toward the 70 maybe the mountains of new mexico but look how everybody's getting a 40 and the 50 as that zings north still bring pockets of 40 and 50 with that and you can see the storm going right up the coast still bringing those 50s with that as well and still showing is going to bring good rainfall towards the northeast. You are going to get a snowfall too. And that next storm is going to bring more right across the same path. And you can still see the latest update with the Euro on that second system. So as you go through Monday morning, you got that squall line potentially showing up. Remember, you have that severe weather that's growing now for this group of storms moving east. As it starts bringing the warmth and you bring that snowfall on the wraparound, you can see your temperatures. You get into the 60s in the south now, but you're still above freezing right here where that storm's building up. And this is where you get the snowfall. This is where you get all your nasty temperatures and your wind chills really cold as you go through Monday. Now, Monday evening, now you got that squall line starting to ramp up, but your dew points are down here. So this is where your severe part of the storms will be as this keeps persisting 
towards Mississippi. He still got Cyclogenesis A strengthening low pressure, still bringing the tight isobars, bringing chances for winds as well as you get into snow and the warmth on the east side of it. You can see your temperatures pulling the 60s way up. Now you get in the 70s coming up, even the 80s through southern Texas. But remember, your wind chills is going to be the worst part on the backside of this storm. And then overnight Monday into Tuesday morning, you still got that potential squall line still moving through. At the same time, you see you're still getting that warm temperatures. You're getting rain coming up on this storm system, and you're not getting much on the wraparound. That's because your temperatures are really warm while it digs in on this low pressure system, but you still got the frozen temperatures behind it, even getting the negative temperatures now. You get a little bit of that Arctic air that went through Canada. Now remember, your wind chills is going to be the worst part. You're actually going to feel like you're in the 20s through Texas during this. Negative wind chills for the higher elevations of the Rocky Mountains and the upper Midwest. That storm system is pulling all these temperatures down and your feels like temperature will be anywhere from negative 15 to negative 20 during this time as this moves through. Now for Wednesday morning, cold temperatures will come down again as that storm system moves off, bringing freezing temperatures a little bit further to the east and bringing some more nasty wind chills. This is on Wednesday, so just be aware of this. It won't be over just by Monday or Tuesday. Thank you again for your time, everybody. I hope this has helped someone out there. If it has, consider leaving a like or sharing this to other people. Let them see the video so you can see what's going on for themselves. Thank you so much for your time. Now, I don't know if you know or not, but today is actually my birthday, and I'm going to go celebrate it. My son's birthday is early tomorrow morning, so it's kind of the birthday day today. So we're celebrating. So thank you all for all your happy birthdays. I did see it yesterday. I also saw a lot of you just had y'all birthday, or it is today or you're about to get it as well. So we're all sharing it together, so I really like that. So before I go, my blessings have been overflowing, and I really want to bless y'all with them. I want them to overflow to y'all, because y'all have been a blessing for me through my years as well. So number 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. I wish the best for every single one of y'all. Y'all have always been there for me, even when I had some of my darkest times. Y'all know how many times I've been attacked on this channel. Channel been hacked. Everything's been going on. God always gives me strength and keeps me strong. But for y'all being there for me, I cannot thank you enough. So I appreciate every single one of y'all. And I hope y'all have a very great day today. And remember... All glory does go to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he blesses every single one of you, you and your family, and forever. <laughs> Amen! <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day, everybody.